Hi there, my name is Matti Sulonto. In this video, I'll have six tips for better travel photography. But before the tips, please consider subscribing to my channel and tap the bell over there so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. And I usually post a new video two times a week. Some of the tips that I'm going to share in this video are not exclusively for travel photography. They are good for any kind of photography, but I'm going to call them travel tips anyway, because I wrote them down while I was traveling. And uh, some of these things came up while I was traveling. I think travel photography as a situation is much more sensitive than the photography that we do near our home. Uh, I think we feel that when we are in a foreign country at some faraway location, we feel that the photo opportunities over there are somehow more unique than the ones near our home. And in a way, I think it's true because we may never go back to that location again. But also the truth is that you may lose or make the photo of your lifetime just outside of your front door. But now let's go to those tips. Tip number one, always have a freshly charged battery, a spare battery with you, or at least a USB power bank if your camera supports USB charging. While this may sound like a lame tip or very trivial thing, but it's not. Let me tell you what happened to me during my recent trip to Malaysia. I had my G9 in my backpack, which is not really a camera bag, it's just a backpack. Anyway, something in the backpack knocked the power switch of my G9, which was in video mode, and the camera started shooting video in my backpack. And when I pulled out the camera uh, to start some real filming or video shooting, I realized the battery was flat. Uh, the camera had been shooting black video in my backpack with some funny muffled uh, voices in it. And uh, alas, there was no video shooting that day. I did not have a spare battery with me because on that morning I thought one fully charged battery in the camera is more than enough for that little bit of filming I was going to do on that day. So this is not so trivial advice. It can happen to anyone. And my advice is that always have a spare battery with you or some sort of spare electricity for your camera, no matter where you are. Tip number two. Get one of these USB chargers with multiple outputs. Especially if you travel to a country where the power, AC power uh, plug is different from your home. You're gonna need an adapter. And I don't think you wanna carry uh, like a bunch of adapters for each individual USB chargeable device you have with you. Besides, at your accommodation, there might even not be that many power like uh, outlets. Unfortunately though, some cameras like for example the GX880 and the LX100 for example are a bit picky when it comes to chargers and they are not compatible for example with this particular charger. But you are going to have many USB chargeable devices with you anyways. You're gonna have a phone, maybe a tablet. If you travel with the family you're gonna have a a two or even more phones, etc. So this kind of device is going to make your life a lot easier because you only need one power uh, like outlet. Unfortunately, I can't give you a link to this particular charger. I bought it locally here in Helsinki, but it's very easy to find this uh, in any, pretty much any online store. The tip number three. Choose a camera that you're willing to carry in your hand all the time. It can be a small camera, can be a big camera or a medium sized camera, but whatever camera or camera lens combination you choose, make sure you are willing to carry it all the time in your hand. 
If you have your camera in your camera bag and then you see something that you think it's maybe worth taking a picture and by the time you get your camera out of your bag the situation might be over already. Or then again if you see something that you are not sure if it's worth taking a picture or not you may not even bother to take your camera out of your camera bag and then you may just lose a very nice picture. If you had your camera in your hand, you would just take the picture and later decide if it was worth it or not. So I think it's wise to carry your camera in your hand all the time uh, because then you will take more pictures and uh, probably also end up with more keepers. The tip number four, make sure you have backup of your photos and videos. When traveling, making backups is not always that straightforward. But I have a couple of suggestions for you here. First of all, of course, if your camera has two card slots, it's easy enough to make a backup on the second card. But if your camera only has one card slot, I suggest, especially if it's a relatively short trip, you take a memory card for each day. So if it's a week long trip, you take seven memory cards and you change the card every day, regardless of how many pictures or how much video you shot on that day. Therefore, if you lose one card or something happens to one of the cards, you only lose one day's worth of uh, material. But if you use one big card, and something happens on the last day of your trip, something happens to your memory card, you will lose everything. Then if it's a long trip, of course, I don't think it's practical to carry maybe 100 memory cards or even more. You will probably have a laptop on a longer trip and then it makes sense to have another SSD drive to back up your whole laptop on that uh, second uh, hard drive. And then of course there is the cloud option to make off-site backup but based on my experience it's not practical when you're traveling. Most of the time you don't have fast enough internet speed without any data cap. Most of the time the connection is not that fast and you probably have some sort of data cap especially if you travel to another country. But of course if you have access to a very fast internet without any data caps then by all means make a cloud backup. That's of course a very good idea. And then the tip number five which is actual photo tip. When we travel we naturally want to capture all those famous tourist attractions and uh, tourist spots. But also try to remember shoot something else. Shoot mundane everyday things that are different from your home. That can be storefronts, delivery vans, food of course, doors, door handles, windows, whatever. Small details can also be very interesting. Try to build a story of your trip because you want to tell a story of your trip. You don't want to end up with a bunch of generic uh, pictures of uh, sightseeing spots. And when you are observing the things around you, it may also lead to a mini project or something. That happened to me in Kuala Lumpur two years ago. I saw a yellow car and I took a picture of it. It was not a particularly good picture, but I just took a picture because I thought the car was kind of cute. And then after a while I realized there are quite a few yellow cars in the city and I started taking pictures of those yellow cars. And in the end, I expanded it in other places like Hong Kong, Tokyo, Kyoto, some places in New Zealand, Australia. And I ended up uh, some really nice pictures and they make a nice series of images. And who knows, maybe someday I'll make a book of them or an exhibition or maybe nothing. But I still ended up with a nice uh, body of uh, pictures and it all started because I just took a picture of a yellow car that looked interesting to me. So whenever you see something that looks interesting 
to you, you think, oh, that's odd or that's interesting or what a weird thing or whatever. Take a picture and all those details, they're going to help you to build a story of your trip, not just some generic trip to some location. And then the tip number six, if you're flying, get a window seat if only possible. There are too many nice things outside of the aircraft window to be missed. Especially during takeoff and landing, you may get really, really nice looking pictures if the weather happens to be good. And at the cruising altitude, you may see some really amazing looking cloud formation, for example. And uh, even in the middle of the night or when the sun is about to rise far somewhere far away in the horizon, you may get really, really nice looking photographs. So get a window seat if you're flying, if it's only possible. So that's it, my six tips for better travel photography experience. If you have any photography related travel tips, please let me know in the comments down below. And before you go, you may want to check out these two videos. And I'd like to thank you for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.